Hey guys, welcome to Savory Saver, where I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. And today, we're gonna make pie, but not the kind of pie you're thinking about. We're gonna make a gluten-free spaghetti pie. This is a gluten-free baked pasta casserole recipe that your family's gonna love, and it's totally customizable. So let's get started. Okay guys, I actually didn't hit record when I cooked off the spaghetti. So what you wanna do is cook six to eight ounces of your favorite gluten-free spaghetti. For this recipe, I used Dalalo and a little bit of Ronzoni that was left in the box. So I actually mixed it. You wanna cook it to the lowest time on the package because it's gonna cook a little more in the oven. So whatever your time is, go to the lowest one. Then what we're gonna do is start these layers. So we're gonna have a layer of spaghetti crust. We're gonna have a ricotta cheese layer, a meat layer, meat sauce layer, and then our cheese on top. So let's get you back to the recipe. So for our ricotta layer, I've got one cup of ricotta and to save myself some dishes, there's about a cup in there. It's about half of a 15 ounce container. I'm just gonna mix what I need to in that. So I've got two tablespoons of fresh parsley. If you didn't wanna use fresh parsley, you could certainly use a teaspoon or so of dried. I'm also gonna use about a half a teaspoon or so of Italian seasoning. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna give it a good mix. If you wanted to add a little bit of garlic powder to this, you could. If you wanna add salt and pepper, you could do that. Actually, let's add a little bit of pepper just to give it a little more seasoning. You could use fresh basil if you wanted to. All right, so that is all mixed up. So we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna get started on our sauce for the pie. Okay, so we're over at the stove and I have this pan preheating pretty high, medium high, because we wanna brine up our beef and our vegetables and all that. So I'm taking one pound of ground beef and we're gonna brown that and guys, I'm not putting any oil in here. There's enough fat in that beef when it comes out. This is ground chuck, so it's 80-20. So I'm not gonna add any more oil to it. As the oil, the grease from the beef starts coming out, that'll be enough in there, and we won't have any, hopefully, extra drain out. So I'm gonna put that in there. And if you guys don't have one of these, we got this a couple months ago on Amazon, and it is a great tool to break up your meat and get it crumbled. And it's not quite as easy to clean as a spoon is because you have each of these little like choppers to do, but it really doesn't take that much time either. And it's probably my new favorite tool in the kitchen. So I'm gonna let this brown up for a couple minutes. And once it starts sizzling really good, we're gonna add a few more things to it to give it some seasoning and flavor. So now that our beef has started to brown up, let's add a few more things to that. I've got one small onion that I've diced up. We're gonna throw that in there. Guys, if you don't like onion, don't use it. If you want more onion, use more. This is totally to, to taste. If you didn't wanna use ground beef, you could use meatloaf mix. You could use ground sausage. You could use a mix of sausage and beef. Those would all be good. I'm also gonna add half of a red bell pepper. Again, totally optional. Another good option would be some mushrooms, either a small can of mushrooms or some fresh mushrooms. Those would be good in here. I'm gonna add a couple cloves of garlic. Those can go in here now. There's enough liquid in there. I'm not worried about the garlic burning. Once the beef is ground up some, using this, I'm gonna switch over to the spoon. Put our spoon in there and move it around. We're gonna add some salt and pepper to taste. If you wanted it spicy, use some crushed red pepper. 
Give that a stir. And this is gonna cook probably, I don't know, five to seven minutes to get everything browned up and to soften the vegetables a little bit. I'm also gonna add half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of Italian seasoning to this. Again, just a little more flavor. You could use fresh if you wanted. You could not add any if you don't want to. Let's let this go a couple more minutes to soften the vegetables and evaporate some of that actual water in there. And then we'll add some sauce to it. Looks like most of our water has evaporated out and that's browning nicely. So let's add some sauce. I'm just using jarred berea. Use whatever you like. You want about two cups of it. So you want to pour that in there. I'm going to put a little water in that and see if I can get any more out of it. So let's cut the heat back just a little bit so it's not splattering all over the place. Let me get a little bit of water in this. All right, guys, let's give this a good stir. We really don't need to let this set very long or simmer very long because everything in it's cooked at this point, but I am gonna let it simmer for just two or three minutes, just to, again, reduce it down a little bit, make it a little thicker, and then we will put it on our pie. So I'm gonna leave this simmering and we'll be back in just a minute and show you how to finish this up and get it in the oven. So our spaghetti is al dente, so let's get the crust of the spaghetti pie made. So we wanna add two tablespoons of butter, salted or unsalted, whichever you prefer. Doesn't really matter. Well, give that a stir, just start melting it. And then we're gonna add Two large eggs and that's to help bind it so I'm gonna actually crack them in a bowl and just give them a quick whisk before I put them in there so let's just give it a quick whisk they don't have to be totally beaten up but they'll just blend a little easier into the pasta And then the other thing we're gonna add with the eggs is half a cup or so of shredded Parmesan cheese. This is the Parmigiano Reggiano. Don't worry about using this if you don't have it. Use that stuff out of the canister, use the stuff out of the bag. It's not gonna matter in the end. So use whatever your preference is. So let's get that in there. The egg in there. And then give it a good mix. And the egg is what's gonna help it set. We wanna stir everything pretty quickly because we don't wanna scramble the eggs. We want it to create the crust. So you wanna pour your mixture into the crust. And then you wanna press it in. So you want to press it in and up the sides as best you can. And now we're going to take that ricotta mixture. This is the ricotta mixture we made a few minutes ago. We're going to take that. We're going to spread that all over this. So spread that around. If you don't like ricotta, you could probably use cottage cheese instead if you like that better. And now that we have that all ready, we have a little bit of a crust per se. We now have our quick meat sauce that's ready. So all I'm gonna do is spread that over the top. And guys, it's gonna cover our crust and that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. If it had been a little less of one thing or the other, it wouldn't have to totally covered it. But 
I'd rather have a little more sauce than not enough. Okay, so our pie is ready to go in the oven. We're gonna bake it for 20 to 25 minutes, somewhere in there at 350. And then we're gonna top it with mozzarella cheese or an Italian blend of shredded cheese. You want anywhere from about, anywhere from a cup to two cups, depending on how much you like. Um, I think probably I'll put about a cup and a half on here. So we're gonna bake it for 20 to 25 minutes, take it out, top it with cheese, put it back in the oven until it's melted. And then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna let this rest for about a 10 to 15 minutes. What we want is just like if you were making a lasagna is we want the pasta to set back up so we can get some good slices. So let's get this in the oven and we'll be back in a bit. Okay guys, our spaghetti pie is done. It's cut. It actually cut out pretty good. You can see a defined wedge in there. That's because we let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes and let it solidify back up so we could cut it easily. This is probably more than what you need for a serving. Um, last time we made this, I think my wife and I ate each ate a size this piece, but we didn't have any bread or salad with it. We just had this. Um, so this is gonna serve, what, you know, probably four to six people easily and you're gonna have leftovers and we actually just popped it in the microwave the next day. Still really tasty. So the crust you can see is held up and it's all together because of that egg and cheese holding it in. Cheese is nice and melted and that filling is all in there. So let's give it a quick bite. Guys, everything's real flavorful. The cheese is in there, the beef. You know, we made our own meat sauce just using jarred spaghetti sauce. The crust, if you will, the spaghetti crust, gluten-free spaghetti crust on top of it, is cutting with everything else. It's held everything in place. Guys, this is an easy recipe that you can do at home, that you can make you know, a hundred changes to, to make it your own. I hope you give this recipe a try. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. I appreciate all of them. Leave any comments below, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks guys.